Hi, and welcome to my channel, Laura's Library Card. So I decided at the very last possible second to participate in Historical Romance Readathon. And that's mostly just because I had agreed to participate in a buddy read that was a historical romance and because the historical romance readathon like group book uh, was instantly available on like from my library. So <laughs> I was like, well, I have historical romances that I have ready to go that I want to read for my other readathons. So I might as well just read those this weekend. That's cool with me. And so I decided at the very last second, I was like, yeah, I'll participate. Uh, but I'm not doing so great. <laughs> um, I found the historical romance readathon on Friday, August 14th. And the readathon was supposed to go from Friday, August 14th through Sunday, the 16th. So I already, and I worked on Friday, so I already like pretty much lost most of Friday, but I spent most of Friday evening reading the Historical Romance Readathon group book, which was Lady Sophia's Lover by Lisa Clavis. Uh, so I read this Friday evening and kind of finished it up on Saturday in the middle of the day, um, and I enjoyed it. I had only ever read one Lisa Clavis book before. I just, that's according to Goodreads. I don't have a rating in there. I don't remember anything about it. So I can't even say whether or not I liked that one other book. Um, I liked Lady Sophia's Lover. Uh, it was about Lady Sophia and how she um, gets a job as the assistant to sort of the, uh, this guy who's, he's essentially like the chief of police. Uh, and a magistrate and she and so he the first chapter is from his point of view and he is instantly like finds her really attractive and he's you know kind of admires her wit and so he agrees to hire her even though she's not a man and then we learn like I don't feel like this is a spoiler this is like less than 20 pages in she's like happy to get this job because she wants revenge against this guy and I was like oh this was not going the way I thought it was gonna go um so I enjoyed it um I felt like I sort of felt like there was a good passage of time before our two characters fall for each other because it's a romance, of course they fall for each other. Um, I wish there had been a little bit more like interaction between the two of them um, other than the fact that he's just such a fine, moral, upstanding citizen and the fact that she is like trying to win him over. I didn't really like get why the two of them liked each other. I like just wanted a little bit more interaction there. Um, there was a big sort of twist uh, partway through where you like find out some information and I'd seen that coming from like eight gazillion miles away. It was not a twist or a surprise to me. Um, I was slightly surprised uh, at how the like final, okay, here's our problem and how is Sir Ross going to solve it? Um, his solution was neat. Um, I should have seen it coming, but at the time I was like, oh, okay, like, I'm, okay, I thought you just like work some magic here, but uh, I mean, he does, but so overall, I enjoyed it. I know that was not coherent, but those are my thoughts on Lady Sophia's Lover. So the second book that I hope to finish in time to count it for historical romance read on is The Beast of Beswick by Amelie Howard. Um, I'm going to be doing this as a buddy read uh, coming soon and I just started this this morning. Um, it is a retelling of Beauty and the Beast, sort of Beauty and the Beast meets Taming of the Shrew. Um, I'm not that far into it. I'm on page 115, the start of chapter 9 and I am enjoying it so far. I can definitely see the Beauty and the Beast parallels. The main male character has been like wounded in the war and so he has big scars um, on his face and body. So he, and he is sort of temperamentally beastly. So he's the beast. Um, but the sort of interesting part of that is that our main female character is the shrew part of the Taming of the Shrew uh, in that she's not this like belle character um she has a lot of her astrid has a lot of like spitfire to her and she uh is is determined to get her way and so she is sort of there's really great banter there's really great like insults traded back and forth um i sort of wish it was a smidgen more sexual tension but i think i mean i'm not that far in so i hope that that has time to improve 
But yeah, overall, I'm really enjoying The Beast of Beswick. I'm recording this on Sunday morning, it's like 10 a.m. Um, and I have the rest of The Beast of Beswick to read today and I have plans later today. So even though I did get another book out from the library that could potentially work because it's a historical romance, I am 99.9% .9 sure I won't even have a chance to start it, let alone finish it. But just because I wanna show you, I had chosen Tempest by Beverly Jenkins at the library just in case I miraculously managed to finish three books in two days. I think a book a day is like a really good thing for me. Like if I can finish Beast of Beswick today, I will count it for historical romance readathon, but like it was not likely that I could have gotten to a third book. But I had one on hand because I hoped I could. So there is like a bingo board for historical romance readathon. I'll put that here. Um, because I'm pretty much only gonna be able to read two books, I um, won't be able to check off a, a very many of these boxes, but Lady Sophia's Lover is a Lisa Claypest novel. Um, I don't think either of these, neither of these have a step back. May, unless Lady Sophia's um, Lover has a step back, then I won't get one with a step back. Both books are part of a series. Neither Lisa Klippes nor Amelie Howard are POC authors, as far as I can tell, just by glancing at their pictures. Uh, and neither of them was published before 2000, though Lady Sophia's Lover comes close at 2002. Lady Sophia's Lover has purple on the cover. It's sort of like a really, it's hard to tell um, on the Goodreads page. It looks more like blue on my computer screen, but on my tablet, it looked more purple. So I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna say it has purple on the cover. We're gonna count it. Neither of the books takes place at sea thus far. Um, Beast of Beswick does not. It seems to be taking place firmly inland in the country estate. And neither of these was a book I already owned. And only Amelie Howard was a new to me author because I'd read one Lisa Claypas book before. I was looking while I was at the library, here's a picture of the stacks. Um, I was looking for a Beverly Jenkins pirate book. I know she has a couple of those and then that would count as a new to me author and author, you know, POC author and a book that takes place at sea. But my library didn't have any of those. They had a couple other Beverly Jenkins books and I got out Tempest and I just was browsing really very quickly to see if there was magically something that was like the pounding pirate or something. And I, I have to say like apparently in my area everybody wants westerns because all I was seeing was like the Texas you know taker or something like they all were like cowboys and highlanders and dukes and there was like a little bit of like Amish and sort of like spy stuff too but I I mean I didn't do like a super thorough inspection but as I was skimming along it was just like Highlander this Scots that Texas this cowboy that and I was just like where where are all of our like Pirates at Sea books? So I'm sure my library has them It just like, the selection while I was there, not so great. And I thought it was kind of interesting that there were so many Western romances available. I wonder if that's sort of just my area or if that's kind of a trend. Tell me if you read romances or the next time you're at the library and you want to just take a skim through your paperback romances, if there's sort of an overwhelming subgenre that's represented. So it is Sunday, August 16th. Um, I hope to finish Beast of Beswick today and I try to jump on later to do my finishing thoughts. Um, but I'm also going to be participating in a buddy read, so maybe I won't do that. Mysterious. Uh, if you have read either of these books or if you have a Beverly Jenkins book that you think I should start with because I don't think I've ever read any Beverly Jenkins, uh, please comment down below. Hi guys, so this is me checking back in. I finished The Beast of Beswick for the historical romance readathon. That was my second book. So I stayed up really late and I did technically read the last like 40 pages this morning, but I'm counting it, okay, I'm counting it. Um, so I ultimately read two books for the Historical Romance Readathon. Um, I already talked earlier about the first book that I finished, which was like the group book, and that was Lady Sophia's Lover by Lisa Claypas, and this is by Amelie Howard, Beast of Beswick. And I read this, um, I read it very quickly because I was trying to cram it in. Um, 
but I, it is a library copy, so I did uh, add some tabbies, but like I didn't annotate in it. Um, I liked it. This book is a retelling of Beauty and the Beast and The Taming of the Shrew, which I have not read Taming of the Shrew, Shrew. I don't think I've ever read like the original Beauty and the Beast, but I've seen the Disney movie eight gazillion times. Um, and I've seen 10 Things I Hate About You, which I think is based on The Taming of the Shrew. So I did see parallels between both of those stories as I remembered them in this book. Um, I enjoyed it. I felt like it was sexy. I have more thoughts on The Beast of Beswick, but I'm going to be participating in a live show chat for this buddy read, which is being hosted by Jen from The Book Refuge and a couple other people from her Discord server. Uh, so that uh, live show discussion of The Beast of Beswick is happening this weekend, Saturday, August 23rd, and it is at 2 Central Time, so that'll be 3 Eastern for me, who had to like actually confirm that. Um, so if you want to hear more of all of our thoughts on this book, which I really enjoyed, uh, you should tune in on Saturday to listen to our buddy read of The Beast of Beswick. So that was it for my historical romance readathon. I decided to do it like literally at the last second. And I got two books in over the weekend, so I felt like that was pretty good for me. The Beast of Beswick uh, doesn't really check, only checks two boxes for me on the Historical Romance Readathon uh, bingo chart. Uh, Amelie Howard is a new to me author and it is part of a series. So I am really glad that I kind of decided at the very last second to participate in the Historical Romance Readathon. Um, if you participated in this readathon, uh, tell me down below what books you got through and if you managed to like clear your entire bingo board. Um, I'd be really interested to, I'm gonna go find uh, other people's videos that participated in that readathon. Otherwise, if you uh, have anything to say about the Beast of Beswick or if you have anything to say about the Lisa Clay Pest novel, Lady Sophia's Choice, that that was the readathon's book choice. Um, go ahead and leave comments down below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe and do all the interaction stuff. I super appreciate it. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Bye.